In Apex Legends, every legend has an ability, a passive, and an ultimate, and some are a little more confusing than others. Some are certainly better than others as well. Today we're going to break down what are the best passives, what are the best abilities, and kind of give them a ranking to see where they scale against each other. We're also going to learn about all these characters, so even though you might be here for your main, uh, you may want to stay and stick around for all of them so you know what they're capable of and the nuances of how their ultimates affect the fight. As always, we got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it with the Bloodhound. Now, the Bloodhound is a super fun character that's very aggressive and allows you to track down your opponents, to hunt them down, see them through walls, and know what they've done within the last minute. His passive is called Tracker, and it allows you to see tracks left behind by your foes. But what does that actually mean? Tracks and certain other actions leave visible traces and highlights for 60 seconds. And this includes footsteps and slides, doors open, enemies being hurt, item and weapon pickups, emptied magazines, vaults over obstacles, even zipline usage, activation of Gibraltar zone of protection, and landings. All of these become information for you to see and follow your opponents, and they will show up on the ground around you, and they will continue to show up as long as you stay on the right scent. One of the big tips about this too is that when you're going near the tracks, you can call them out to your squad mates using a contact. Uh, ping, which is the default H where you can use your mouse button, that's what I use. Red tracks are fresh and the enemy's nearby. Gray tracks are old, so the enemy hasn't been there in about a minute. This will allow you to know how close you are and if you're gaining or you're losing your opponents. Eye of the Allfather is the Bloodhound ability, and this allows you to briefly reveal hidden enemies' traps and clues throughout structures in front of you. Basically, it also reveals them to your team, so you know that when you're using this Q tactically, so you're going into a building or you're getting rushed down from people outside, you can hit your Q and you're your whole team can become aware of the situation. This is a very, very useful tool, but make sure not to spam it. You can actually really save this for a good moment, especially in a 1v1 if you're hiding around maybe some uh, a box or you're really lurking and trying to get around one person who's been chasing you. This is really good to save until that moment you feel like they're very close so you can see them clearly. Overall, in 1v1s, this ability is really strong and ranks as one of the best abilities in the game in my opinion, but it's not better than his ultimate, which I just wish I could have up all the time. Ultimate Accelerants over here here please. Beast of the Hunt. This is the Bloodhound's ultimate that allows you to enhance your senses, move faster, and highlight your prey. Essentially what this means is you, you move fast and you can see your enemies highlighted in red. The movement speed feels amazing, but what happens is your vision turns black and white. Don't be afraid about that. Just know that your enemies then stand out even more because they are highlighted red. You can see their active footsteps. Uh, Beast of the Hunt's a great way to finish off a weakened enemy. You could also see enemies through Bangalore smoke or uh, the caustic gas. Uh, and again, it's much easier to see them from range as well. This could be used as a sniping skill because you could see someone peeking from across the map and just use this to get the vantage point and know exactly when they're coming back out or sneaking away and finish them off. I think Bloodhound is an extremely strong character in the game and I think if you want to play Play aggressive this is probably my favorite character to do so outside of the Bangalore now the Bangalore has a passive that's considered by a lot including shroud the very popular streamer I'm sure you already know on twitch to be the best passive in the game basically what it is called is double time the Bangalore when she gets shot is able to move faster it's a pretty nuts amount of movement speed and I think this allows the Bangalore to really outpace anybody who's chasing her I think maybe a beast of the hunt bloodhound is the only thing that I could see actually catching her her, and that's saying a lot. That's sacrificing a whole ult to just catch one person using their passive. What this also means is if you holster your weapon, you gain even more movement speed with this passive that essentially you are a bloodhound without having to use your ult whenever you're in combat. And that is a very big advantage when moving in these fights, trying to maneuver and just get out of line of sight or re-engage enemies. We all know how important movement is in Apex Legends, which is why this passive is so strong. You get a leg up on everyone without having to use an ability. It just naturally happens happens and is one of the reasons why people are saying it's relatively OP. As far as ranking, this is a top tier passive, but let's get into her abilities and see if they keep up the pace. Bangalore's Smoke Launcher is a tactical high velocity smoke canister that gets fired into a smoke wall on impact. She has two charges, she could use them while using abilities, while healing, while shooting, and it allows her to create this huge cluster of smoke where she is or where she aims. Now this does do damage, but it's not really the damage that matters. It's about 10 per canister, so don't use it for that unless you're trying to be cheeky. Really, it's about using this to create havoc or to get out of a hectic situation. The problem with this ability and why I can't rank it so high is because it also can be extremely disrupting to your teammates. People can't see in this smoke unless they 
somehow have a bloodhound ability or there's a bloodhound running or you have a digital threat and now if you have the digital threat it could be a great strategy because the enemies can't see in your smoke but if you blind your teammates and you blind your enemies there have been a lot of moments where I've seen enemies get away or just sneak back up on me and now we're at a worse position because we don't know where they are I'm gonna rank this at about a mid tier ability just out the gate but of course with every single ability it really depends on how you play it even the caustic can have some of the best abilities in the game if you use the situation to your utmost advantage now the Bangalore ult is called rolling thunder and just like rolling thunder it's a artillery strike that she calls at the start of where she throws her canister once that happens she will set up the area where a slowly creeping artillery strike will move across the landscape it has a pretty short wind up to call down and it's a pretty decent explosion it's not as devastating as I would say uh, the Gibraltar ultimate which of course is just so devastating when you get hit by it just the concussive nature of it is really really bad but it can be very good to I think chase the enemy down or at least clear out an area and use your own movement speed in the fight to reposition because you know you force them into a bad spot the real difference between this and the Gibraltar ultimate is the cascading nature of where the missiles land whereas the Gibraltar ultimate kind of is thrown where the smoke is and just lands on that singular area hopefully that makes sense now Bangalore's abilities are okay her ultimate is pretty similar to that of the Gibraltar and doesn't guarantee kills is really used more for more of a spacing tool but in general her passive is one of the strongest if not the strongest passive in the game and thus with movement skill being so important in Apex Legends she has some pretty top tier abilities when you put them all together now the next Apex Legend we're talking about is the Gibraltar his name is actually Makoa Gibraltar and you know I'm a Paladins guy so we have a character named Makoa as well so I just found this extremely funny I don't know why it's just uh, of all names to give this guy he's super cool and he brings down a passive that is called gun shield aiming down sights deploys a gun shield that blocks incoming fire now it's important to know if you're playing Gibraltar and you're like where's my gun shield it only works when you ADS when you aim down your sights you hold down your right click for newer players and so that doesn't mean that you're gonna get it when you hip fire and sometimes hip firing is the better situation so being a Gibraltar player you have to know when to use the ADS for the shield maybe you have a better angle and when to just hip fire to get the kill now his Q ability is called Dome of Protection, and this is a very strong ability. It blocks attacks inside and out for 15 seconds. What does this mean? It means you can't shoot out of it, and enemies can't shoot you. If you want to shoot inside the dome, you gotta go in the dome. You want to shoot outside of it, you gotta step outside. Now there's some min-maxing you could do here. You could step to the right, slightly outside, still have most of your body in cover, but have your weapon outside of the dome, and that will actually still fire bullets at your enemies. However, I think this is really best used as more of a defensive mechanic. Hey, let's shield up. Let's revive a teammate inside. Uh, but it is very loud. So once you use it, everyone will kind of know where your team is. And it also signifies that things have gone bad. So a lot of people will feel confident in approaching you because they know you're probably rezzing, probably healing yourself, or just under fire. The Gibraltar ultimate is extremely nauseating if you get hit by it. Very deadly. And you have to really take yourself into cover to deal with it. It's called defensive bombardment. And really the difference between that the Bangalore ultimate is that it calls in a concentrated mortar strike on a marked position so that's not gonna roll and it's not gonna like progressively do its damage in one stage to the next to the next it's just gonna all happen in that area when the mortars land overall Gibraltar's passive is pretty average I don't find that the shield really saves me in a lot of situations it definitely blocks some damage but if I'm going to die the shield isn't the reason why I survive usually however I will say that the dome shield the dome of protection as well as the ultimate his bombardment are extremely strong abilities and so he has some of the better abilities in the game I just can't get over the fact that when I play him I feel really slow I don't know what that is do you know what I mean I just, he's just a little taller of a frame I just feel a lot slower I feel like I'm a lot more out in the open and so I really have to make sure I have a teammate that I want to use my shield to save or to help revive when I'm solo queuing I'm not a big Gibraltar fan but that's just me now let's start talking about what many consider to be the ultimate apex legend See what I did there? Anyways, it's the lifeline. She actually brings herself into the conversation by having three incredibly good abilities, although her ultimate is maybe not as flashy as some of the others, doesn't do damage for more of the aggressive players. As far as winning a battle royale, I think her abilities together prove to be the best set of abilities in the entire game. Let me explain to you why. First off, her passive combat medic does more than most people realize. You know you get the revive knockdown teammates faster, and you know you get a shield as well, which means you can even do it out in the open and have some cover whenever she tries to do it. 
but she also gets to use healing items 25% faster, and that's not just healing items, which you think of syringes or medkits, it means she can use shields faster as well, shield batteries, phoenix kits, everything that involves getting your health and your shield back up, she gets back up 25% faster than you. So if you're in a gunfight, she's in a gunfight, you both knock each other low, she's gonna get back up 25% faster and have more shield than you most likely when she does, ready to push you and win the fight. Now it's not all sunshine and sunflowers, there are some moments where you can get a little over aggressive, overconfident, and try to heal somebody in the middle of a hot battlefield. Most people will just wait for the revive to happen and then shoot your down teammate again after they've been revived with a sliver of health and shoot you while your animation locked after the revive. So get that person around a, a corner, still take precaution, but when you do that, it's almost guaranteed you're going to get them back up. Now it's time to talk about her heal drone, her Q ability called the Drone of Compassion. What this does is she places a small drone that hovers about a foot off the ground and heals nearby enemies within the limited range. Now, a small tube will extend to the ally to indicate that they're being healed, so if you're next to it and the tube isn't at you, uh, then you're not being healed, so go even closer. I found that the range is pretty small on this, and I liked it. It's a, it's a good balancing mechanic because you can't stray too far. You can't be out like strafing and flanking, have that tube extending, you know, half halfway across the map to you and be like, what the hell? How's this guy getting healed? No, you have to stay close, and most of the time it means you just have to stop fighting unless you have a really small box you're fighting around. Uh, one of the good things to know is that the drone can be destroyed. A lot of people don't know this. You can destroy the, uh, the drone with guns and explosions. Uh, but it's really, really good if you keep it safe, put it in a room, hide behind a box, get your teammate all healed because it will heal multiple people at the same time. I've even seen the tube attached to the enemies because believe it or not, the enemies can also use it for health. So if you get down, your drone is still out, an enemy before finishing you can stand by your drone, get healed, and then use a finisher and have full health to go back into the fight and keep wrecking your team. That is that is not a good situation. Last but not least, your ultimate care package is one of the ultimates you really want to use ultimate accelerants on because this is essentially just a game winner. Every now and then, once you get your ultimate up, you can summon a care package personally to you and your squad that holds up to uh, level three or level two armor, helmets, knockdown shield, shield cells, bandages, med kits, phoenix kits, and weapon attachments can that can occasionally be legendary. So essentially what happens and what I found this to be realistically is that uh, as the game goes on, you just essentially all get epic gear, maybe even legendary gear. And the longer you're alive, the more you call this down and the better gear you get, even if you don't loot well early on in the early game. So to me, I feel like this is one of those things that just slowly but surely tips the fight in your favor, which is why it's so strong, but it doesn't feel like it's that strong. You know what I mean? I mean, there are a lot of games where you just don't get the right loot and that, you know, you, you and your squad are running around with, you know, level one body shields and no helmets. And you can call this down two or three times with a lot of ultimate accelerants to early and mid game and just get yourselves kitted, ready to fight. And that can sometimes be the difference between winning and losing. Being better geared is definitely an advantage that will help you win more games. A good thing to know is you can actually be damaged by it. I believe uh, enemies and you, you can be damaged if you stand underneath it when it lands. So be careful for that. Uh, but it also gives away your position. So I've seen a lot of lifelines call that in an open area when it's a small circle, maybe three teams left, and all of a sudden you see that package dropping, they're not prepared to have two teams move in on them because they're thinking, oh, I'm getting sweet loot, but really everyone else is like, oh, we see where we are and we're gonna go kill you. Overall, the snowball potential of the care package, the use of the ultimate accelerants, which is not the easiest item to take a lot of advantage on for other characters because their ults come up pretty quickly, like the Wraith and the Pathfinder. Uh, I like it on the Bloodhound because I just love that ult. I want to live in that ult, but you know what I'm saying. The Lifeline really uses Ultimate Accelerants well. Her her passive is one of the best passives in the game, and to have as a part of your team, and her Q, her heal bot, is super strong, especially early game when you get down and out. Overall, she's a very high tier character, and all of her abilities are super top tier in my opinion. Now moving on to more of a controversial character, the Caustic. Now I'm gonna apologize for any gameplay you might be seeing of me playing the Caustic because I absolutely suck with this character. And the one time I got a hot dub with this guy, I freaking ran out of memory and the recording was ruined. Just. FML, dude. What the heck? But anyways, you're going to see some bad caustic gameplay, but I'm going to explain how his things work. Let's first talk about his passive. It's called Nox Vision. Now, this passive is relatively underwhelming because there are a couple of items that do this exact same thing and are not that hard to find. I find digital threats pretty often in my games, and he basically can see people in his gas. 
In my opinion, you know, the brother's throwing out gas. He got a gas mask. He's Mr. Gas. Why can't he just see someone in the gas anyway? Like, to me, this feels like not a great passive. And so this is one that I would rank pretty low. His ability, Nox Gas Trap, is also one that's very situationally amazing. This will win you the game. There's no way anyone will beat you with this. But it's also a very situationally bad underwhelming and you will never use it and you will die in the fight without having any use for any of your abilities while everyone's smoking and healing and and revealing and doing all that stuff in front of you so it's a feels bad man type moment but it's also a feels amazing man type moment as well you can hold up to three charges of this ability you could also pick this ability up which i know a lot of people actually don't know and you can play six at a time you can also shoot these gas traps and cause the gas to spray themselves uh, or if enemies walk by them the gas will start spraying out in an area it will make them look and feel dizzy uh, and it will also give them like like we said the Nox vision so you can see them moving within your gas but most enemies are smart enough to just not do that it's like a brother having an ability like yo man I'm the waterfall guy if you fall off the waterfall you're dead instantly and they're like well i'm just not gonna i'm just not gonna fall in the waterfall then i'm just gonna shoot you right here so that's the thing costa can feel very helpless at times where you know you have to fight in a room you have to let the fight come to you you have to fully position and be tactical about it otherwise people will just not they'll see your your canisters and they will just run away from your gas traps they'll fight you in another place and uh so this really doesn't make him applicable in a lot of situations listen i don't have a lot of good costa gameplay so i'm not going to keep going on about this character but i will say that in the right situation his nox gas grenade which is his old ultimate can be absolutely deadly now it only deals one damage per second but combine that with a nox gas trap uh, you combine that with maybe trapping someone in a room if they're holding a an area a building a town in the final circle and they will have to move they will die inside if they do not move so it's really good at clearing people but when you're running around if you're trying to be aggressive if you're going for kills it's a lot harder to play a caustic because he needs players to come to him ultimately i think his abilities are situational all of them sometimes they are the best abilities in the game and you win just because he exists sometimes they are the worst and there is no clear application for it so pick your poison if you want to play the caustic see what well, that was that guy was now we only have three more to go through the mirage the wraith and the pathfinder and these are some of my favorite ones to play so let's get into it uh the pathfinder really one of my favorite mobility oriented champions or legends excuse me in this game his passive is called insider knowledge and it allows him to scan a survey beacon to reveal the ring's next location the next ring will be indicated by a green circle on the map survey beacons can be pinged you can also use this to help the pathfinder locate or remember to scan them if if someone is a Pathfinder in your squad and they're not doing it. Uh, the other thing about it is that you are vulnerable. It takes a second to actually activate, but it shows up as a green circle then where the circle after the current one is will end up next. So it's really good information as to where you should position and move. Now, his ability is called Grappling Hook, and this is one of my favorite abilities that has a lot of nuance to how you use it. You throw a Grappling Hook that will attach to the first solid object it hits and pulls you towards it at rapid speed. The Grappling Hook can also attach to players, pulling the two of you together. Now, there's not a lot of clips of this, but there have been one where people use a Mastiff shotgun, they go with a grapple, they pull a player to them, and just one pump him in the face. It's pretty awesome, and I think the Grappling Hook is great for just essentially avoiding people, getting around cover, and it's that extra bit of mobility that maybe you're uphill you want to get downhill faster maybe you're downhill you want to reposition uphill just allows you to swing literally and metaphorically I guess the fight in your favor and go towards the option of repositioning or going towards your target now last but not least the zipline gun is his ultimate and this is something I see a lot of people not use enough it creates a zipline between your current location and your target location which you your teammates and enemies can use to move quickly between points so two balancing aspects here you have to know that your enemies and your teammates can use it so if you're trying to run away just like Wraith's portal you know somebody can follow you via the same path that you found so be careful about how you use it but it's really good at flanking it's really good at just covering distance especially if you're trying to get out of a moving circle towards you and it has a very low cooldown so use it on cooldown I find that that allows the Pathfinder to really utilize this skill to move about the map be more mobile than any other champion in this regard and also gain a lot of knowledge uh, to know where enemies are and they get back to safety using that zipline again grappling hook and zipline are two of my favorite abilities in the entire game and I think they're heavily underrated and underused once people get the mechanics of this down once people People know exactly how the grapples work how the zip lines work how far it can actually cover I think these are gonna be some of the best abilities in the game but very high skill cap so he's 
got about a high tier, a little bit under high tier because not everyone can take advantage of this the way that double time can be taken advantage of on the Bangalore. Moving on to the Mirage, his passive is called Encore. You automatically drop a decoy and cloak for five seconds when knocked down. Once you're down and this activates, if you're near a ledge or fall off, try to go down. It'll cover a great distance and hopefully throw the enemy off of your trail long enough for it to activate again. This is actually a really good tip uh, when you are knocked to really throw the enemy off your scent. His Q ability, his ability Psych Out, is one of my more favorite abilities for getting noobs to fall for this trick. You send out a holographic decoy to confuse the enemy, and uh, honestly, I've seen so many people fall for this bait. You just send somebody out, you're in, a, you're in a, a gunfight, you send somebody out to the right, they shoot at it, you know exactly where they are, you move around to the left, and you get some free shots once they realize, wait, that's not you, and they've lost track of where you originally were. It works so well. Apparently, this was a, a hologram ability from Titanfall 2 as well, and uh, the ability cooldown is low, so use it often, especially in a fight, just to throw people off. Even if you're just moving left for no reason, throw it right, just so you can move left and people, if they do see you, uh, you know, think uh, something else is going on. His ultimate is called Vanishing Act, and this is one of the weaker ultimates in my opinion. I've seen Shroud actually laser people the second that this ultimate goes off, even though it's supposed to deploy a team of decoys to distract enemies while you cloak. The problem with the cloak is it's still visible. You can actually see people in the Mirage Cloak, so it's not a true cloak, um, and that is one of the reasons why it's not that strong in my opinion. Although, again, if you have a noob or if you're using this preemptively, you could probably throw people off the scent while you reposition, which is how I like to use it. Now, wrapping it all up, his Vanishing Act ultimate is a little lame, doesn't do any damage, doesn't quite get him out of every situation, really just more of a distraction and a preemptive thing at best. Encore, the passive, is good when you're downed, but you have to be downed to use it, and you kind of, you know, that kind of sucks. That means you lost the fight already. I think better passives are, allow you to win the fights and not get knocked in the first place. And his, his Q ability, Psych Out, is actually one of the better abilities for getting kills and confirming kills, throwing people off your scent in the entire game. I actually rank this ability very, very high by itself. Uh, unless you're coming up against one of the best, most experienced players in this game, uh, most average players you see will fall for your decoy, you'll get free shots, and most likely a free kill every time you use it. Last but not least, we have the Lady who stole the show. The one and only Wraith to talk about. And she's got some great abilities that rank extremely high, not only in competitive play, but in solo and 1v1 situations. Her passive is called Voices from the Void. A voice warns you when danger approaches. As far as you can tell, it's on your side. Now, you're gonna hear a spectral voice audibly warn you if someone's looking or aiming at you, or if there are traps nearby, such as the Caustic's Nox Gas Trap. The specifics of what qualifies as looking at you we haven't really figured that out yet, but the frequency it will activate, you, you can understand people are then aiming at you and know that there's danger approaching. You could press H and share that with your teammates so they know something's up as well. And if you know something's up as well, it's a great time to use Into the Void, her ability that allows her to reposition quickly through the safety of void space, avoiding all damage. Now the thing about this is everything will look great to you, but you are invulnerable. The outside appearance is obscured. It's a little difficult to follow you, but you can, if you're a good player, know exactly the trail that she's leaving and know where she will end up. You can't see other players for this duration, so sometimes you'll see like some, uh, some phantoms or some things that look like players but those aren't other players so just keep running where you knew there was open space or behind that box you were trying to go to in the first place like i said that faint trail will make it a little easier for teammates to fight you but this is a really good close quarters escape because you can run through players you can run around them you can get out of the room that everyone's trapped you in with shotguns all those things the big thing to know is that there's a brief delay and by i mean brief i mean you're gonna expect to use this cue right when you get shot but you're gonna have to use it a little bit before which is where her passive comes into play you know danger's approaching you use your Q and you get out before you're able to get shot and taken down. Now the last ability in the game we're talking about here in this video and I hope you have enjoyed it so make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like if you did find this information valuable. It took me a while to get this gameplay and set up this video but I hope it did do justice to the characters. Uh, it's called Dimensional Rift. It links to locations with portals for 60 seconds allowing you, your teammates, and enemies to use them. What this basically does is you start a portal in one location, you hit your, your, your ultimate button, you travel where you want that portal to end you can actually press your Q during that time to even go faster and then when you're ready or you run out of energy you'll see that uh, timer in front of you you actually press left click again and that will be the portal you can now travel between those two locations and what people have said is that it's actually five times roughly the speed traveled uh, to go from distance to distance of that portal so you're basically traversing the map at five times speed if you were actually gonna run the distance the portals can take you at max length uh, you are invisible you are invulnerable while you take portals but again 
and enemies can follow you. If you are downed, you also are able to travel through the portal, but one thing that I did notice is that there was one time I had a knockdown shield, and I actually traveled through the portal, and then when I got out of the other side, I wasn't able to use my knockdown shield again. I don't know if that was a bug. I don't know if I, you know, don't use your knockdown shield until you get to the side of the portal you really want to use it on. Don't use it while you enter the portal. Either way, that's just my experience that I wanted to share with you all. But before I go today, I just want to say thank you for all of the new viewers, faces, eyes, and ears who have been watching, listening, and interacting with my content lately. It's been really awesome to see the channel kind of blow up for videos that are more positive, lighthearted, because that's what I stand for. I want to make gaming a better place. I think we have a community here that's positioned to be one of the most positive and exciting and fun places to be on the internet, and I'm really glad for all of you joining the Rainstorm and embarking on this journey with me, helping us to hit some great milestones coming up here soon. So subscribe, be friends, comment, I'll comment back when I can, and as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you all next time.